Hey guys, it's Miss Megan and I'm here for our Sunday School lesson. Today is April 26th and this is going to be continuing our series on Leviticus and when God establishes the priesthood. So let's go ahead and get into our lesson. So our central truth for today is that God must be treated as holy. He is so good and so holy, and we've talked about in the past couple weeks about how he can't be around sin. And so we needed a way to help us get to God, and Jesus did that for us on the cross because he was so perfect. Um, and our key verse for today is Leviticus 10.3, and it says, Among those who are near me, I will be sanctified, and before all the people I will be glorified. That's Leviticus 10.3. So we've talked about the people and how they had their tabernacle after they left Egypt. Um, there was a little, it was sort of was like a tent and the, the tabernacle was where God would come down to the Holy of Holies and the priests would have to go into the Holy of Holies once a year to sacrifice for the sins of the people. But how did we get to that point? How did we get to know who the priest was? What? How did they know what to do? Well, God gave instructions for all of these things and that's what we're going to be talking about today. So we talked about how God must be treated as holy and how the people had the tabernacle, but they needed someone to be a mediator for them. They needed someone to go to God for them because they were not holy enough and they were so sinful. And so a mediator is someone who goes between God and people, or really a mediator can be someone that goes between two different people of any type of group. Um, sometimes lawyers are called mediators when there are two different groups of people who are having a disagreement over something. A mediator will come in to the middle and help bridge the gap or create the conversation between the two people that um, can help them reconnect. So a mediator is what the people needed. And so the priests were going to serve as mediators. So that meant they had to live extra careful lives. They had to make sure that they were trying not to sin, that they knew the law, and that they would try to not break that. And of course, as you can imagine, that this did not always go well for the people because the priests were still sinful men. So there were a lot of um, examples in the Bible of how this went badly. And we'll talk about that one of those in a minute. So God set apart Aaron, who was Moses' brother. We talked about this if you were in children's worship. Last week, we talked about Aaron and how he was the first high priest. And so God set him apart to be the priest, the high priest who would go on behalf of the people to sacrifice, make their sacrifices to God for them. And he set them apart. But they were sinful just like everyone else. So first, before they could go into the temple, they had to be cleansed and forgiven of their own sins. And so Moses, the, for the first couple years this happened, Moses would wash them with water, showing that they were trying to purify themselves from sin and to show that that is what needed to happen to get to God. And so then he, Moses put on special clothes on Aaron, which was a uniform, kind of like a, uh, if you've seen a police officer, they have uniforms. Firefighters have uniforms. It helps them with their jobs. So the priests also had a uniform. And Aaron's were especially majestic because he was the high priest. So there were priests, and then there was the high priest who was Aaron. And he wore a blue robe with decorated gold trim, and it was really fancy. And um, it had a hat, and on the hat it's, it was made in gold, and it said, Holy to the Lord. And he also had a staff. And he had something called an ephod of gold, and it was kind of like a vest, and it had 12 gems. And if, what do you think those might have represented? If you said the 12 tribes of Israel, you're right. So there was one gem for each of the tribes of Israel. And so after he put on his, his robes, his priestly uniform, then Moses would anoint him with oil, which means he put oil on top of his head to show that the Holy Spirit had, was going to be come with, upon him. And this is different than when the Holy Spirit comes within us as believers after Jesus. So they would have to put oil on to signify that they were um, coming into pre the presence of the Holy Spirit before they could begin their ministry. So now we don't have to do that, right? No one rubs oil on your head. When you want to pray to God, you just do it because the Holy Spirit now can live within us because of Jesus. So then after Moses did all of these things, they would offer the, the offerings we talked about last week, the sin offering, the burnt offering, the grain offering, and then they would do a fellowship offering, which was allowing the priests to become priests. And so they did all those same offerings we talked about last week, 
before the priest could then do that on behalf of someone else later. So also Moses would sprinkle blood on their heads to remind them of their sin and how we are covered with sin. And he would put some on their right ears and their right thumbs and their right big toes, which is kind of silly, isn't it? I would not, it doesn't make sense to me, but what it meant is to show that their sin was covering their whole body and also it helped them remember that they are to use their ears to listen to God's holy word. They are used to use their hands to do his holy work and their feet to walk in his holy way. So it does actually make sense, doesn't it? To use, put the blood in all those different places to show all the ways we need God for our bodies. So then Aaron had become, after he went through all of those different steps, Aaron had become the high priest. And so he would offer sacrifices for himself, and then he would offer sacrifices for all the people. So Aaron, after he was getting older, his sons, we talked about his sons in children's worship last week. He had four sons, and his sons were training to take over for him. Well, one time, his two of his sons, their names were Nadab and Abihu, they did not treat God as holy. They did not follow God's specific instructions. And now sometimes God tells us to do things in a certain way. And we may not understand why he wants us to do that. We don't understand some a lot of things that, about God until maybe we're in heaven. And then we'll be able to say, oh, I understand now why you did that, God, or why you asked me to do this and this and this. But we don't sometimes don't understand that. But that doesn't mean that we don't have to follow his instructions because he knows what's best for us because he loves us and he made us. And so he had given the priest very clear instructions as to how he wanted them to do things, what type of sacrifices were best. And there were reasons for all of that. And Aaron's two sons, two of the four sons, they did not listen. And so they author, offered what was called an unauthorized fire, which means something that they had done. We don't know exactly what it was, but something that they had done was not 100% what God wanted them to do. And they that showed that they did not respect God. It's okay to mess up. It's okay because we know we're not always going to follow God's rules. And because we are sinful, right? We talk about this a lot. We are full of sin and sometimes we're not going to follow God correctly. But these guys did this on purpose and they did it in a big way and they knew they were not doing the right thing. And so it's possible that they were trying to take power for themselves or to show that they were bigger than God or that God didn't matter. And so unfortunately, God had the fire come up and it consumed them. It burned them. They were dead because they didn't follow God's rules. And this happened a lot back in the Old Testament to people who didn't follow God's rules because his judgment would come upon them. And that's another great thing about Jesus is that after Jesus came and rose from the dead and took on all our sin, that kind of thing does, just doesn't really happen anymore, usually. So especially not in the Bible. So things that if, they're try if we're trying to follow God, but we mess up, God doesn't strike us down or burn us in fire because Jesus took that sin for us and we are forgiven for that. And we can just say, oh God, I'm so sorry that I did this. But there's not going to be those huge problems when people who are believers can say they're sorry and God forgives us. But that hadn't happened before Jesus came. And so his sons were burned up. And so his other two sons became the priests and carried on the line. But the two sons that did not listen and did not recognize God as holy, that was their sinful heart, and so God destroyed them. But now, now we don't need a high priest to go before us to God, do we? Because Jesus is the high priest. He doesn't have to keep cleansing himself. He is perfect, and so when he went into the Holy of Holies for us, we can trust and know that his sacrifice was the best. He offered sacrifice of his life for us. And so it, when he did that, it was as if he brought all the 12 tribes in with him. And he was in the very presence of God. And so he now is our mediator. And so we don't have to do all of these different steps to get to God, to be able to come to God and to offer our sacrifices and our offerings to him. Because Jesus did that for us on the cross. When he is our high priest, now we're like his little children priests, sort of like Aaron's sons in training because he, he is our father and our high priest and we can learn from him and go to God the Father with him. And that's why the Holy Spirit, we have the Holy Spirit living within us. And that's so exciting, isn't it? All right, so let's look at our crafts.
So this is our craft for today. We are going to be making a diagram that shows us how we need God and we needed a mediator and then we got that through Jesus. So you're going to take a construction paper, it can be any color, or you can even use a white plain piece of paper, it doesn't really matter. Just the one blank piece of paper. And then you have these sheets that you can download on our Google Drive if you need access to that, let me know, um, but we do have access from our website and also our Facebook page. So it looks like this. And you are going to color and cut out all of these little shapes. Um, and then you're gonna make, in the, in the blank box right here, you are going to draw a picture of yourself. After you cut those out, you're also gonna wanna draw an arrow or cut an arrow out of some paper. You can just color it on the back of or the scraps of the paper you just cut out your other shapes from or you can um, cut out another piece of construction paper but you want it to be about this big about an arrow and you'll see my arrow here in a second you are going to work on gluing them to your paper so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to be gluing on the god is holy and it's going to go right here on this side it's going to show us why he's on this side and we this is a picture of Bella that she drew herself. We are on the other side because we are simple. And remember, we can't be by God because of our sin. So there it shows us separated from God. And then the cross, Jesus on the cross, comes and acts as a mediator. So you're going to take your cross and you're going to put it in the middle. And then you're going to take the arrow and put it over top of the cross, like this, showing how Jesus bridges the gap between us and God's holiness because he is holy. So he can go between us and get us to God so that we don't have to have a priest do it for us anymore. We can just go straight to God and show him and talk with him and have a relationship with him. And then last but not least, there's this verse that says, consider Jesus the apostle and high priest of our confession, Hebrews 3, 1. So this talks about how Jesus is our high priest. And so we have a different relationship with God now after Jesus came and rose from the dead than people did before. So this is what it looks like. Very easy. You can do it on regular white paper. I, have, I happen to have this green construction paper. But this is a great reminder of how we are over here and God is over here. And Jesus took that bridge and made it so we could cross to God. All right, so y'all have a great week, and we'll see you next week. Bye-bye.